In this video, I talk about buyer's decision making regarding how many units to buy, when to buy under a situation where the supplier has a constant lead time and the buyer faces a variable demand. That is, the demand is not predictable. So the buyer faces the same cost as in case one and case two, uh, total inventory cost, total ordering cost and the purchase cost. Let us revisit the example uh, we saw in the case two where the demand is 70 units per week. The buyer has an ordering quantity of 70 and the supplier has a lead time of two days. So since the lead time is two days, the buyer will place an order of 70 units by end of Thursday. Equivalently, the reorder point is equal to 20 units. That is the, a product of lead time and average demand. So two times 10 is 20 units. Let us take a look at how this picture changes when the demand becomes variable. Following is how the inventory level decreases over a week. The wavy line indicates the demand varies from day to day. In this case, the first week has a low demand and the slope of the demand curve is less steep. In the first week, 20 units of on-hand inventory is sufficient for the buyer to address the demand during the lead time. As you can see, the buyer has uh, some amount of on-hand inventory when the order arrives. All right, so this is the on-hand inventory. The next week, the demand is higher and the slope is steeper. As a result, the buyer runs out of the inventory before the order arrives. Clearly, since the demand is variable, demand in one week can be higher or lower than the next week. As a result, buyer may or may not run out of products during the lead time. Just to address the variability in the demand, the buyer may have to carry a little bit more than 20 units. In other words, the reorder point need to be higher than 20 units. So the difference between the old and the new reorder points is called safety stock. So the reorder point is equal to the sum of the average demand during the lead time and a safety stock. Variability of the demand is measured by the distribution of demand during the lead time. And this is the average demand during the lead time. If the buyer carries the inventory that is equal to the average demand during the lead time, the buyer can satisfy only 50% of the demand that happens during the lead time. The rest 50% will be lost, which is clearly bad for the business. Now let us say if the buyer wants to satisfy 85% of the demand during the lead time, then on-hand inventory needs to be increased. So this 85% is called service level. So higher the service level, higher on-hand inventory. The amount that buyer carries when an order is placed is called reorder point. The probability of unsatisfied demand during the lead time is called stock out probability. In this case, it is 15%. The difference between the reorder point and the average demand is called safety stock, which is denoted by Z times standard deviation of demand during the lead time, which is denoted by Sigma DLT. Here, uh, Z is the number of standard deviation that can be calculated based on uh, the service level. For instance, using an Excel function, Z value for service level of 85% is 1.036. So that is Z value is the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution for a given service level. Basically, the ordering quantity never changes from cases to from case to case. The only thing that changes is the reorder point at which the buyer places an order. In case two, when the inventory level is equal to L times D, the buyer places an order. However, in case three, due to variability in demand, the reorder point increases by an amount called safety stock, which is defined by Z times standard deviation during the lead time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your time.